Halen and his band. They're dropping a new album called Mammoth 2. And so, the, subsequently, they're on the Mammoth 2 tour. Wednesday, July 24th, they'll come through. They'll do MGM Northfield Park. Ticketmaster.com has got the full details. Want to go? Throw a couple of tickets here for caller 10. Good luck. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. These days, you have a million ways to entertain yourself. Are you not entertained? This one just puts entertain in air quotes. I am not entertained. The Alan Cox Show. On 100.7 WMMS. Three five one nine two. Want to send a text? AlanCoxShow.com. Want to watch live? A Cavs off tonight. Big win though in New Orleans over the Pelicans last night. One sixteen to ninety five. That is a decisive victory. Donovan Mitchell's back, so that makes a big. Oh, is difference. he really? Yeah. Was he was in last night? Was that his return? That to, was his uh, return. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Uh, what's his name still out? Uh, Evan Mobley. Yeah, the ankle, right? I think he'll be out for the rest of this week, maybe back early next week. Oh, boy. Hopefully. But Darius Garland is in? Yeah, he's in. Jared Allen is in? Yep. Still got the fro? Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. He's throwing it up. Uh, Cavs Rockets is your next shot to um, uh, hear those guys. Saturday, 5 o'clock is the tip-off. So 4.30 on MMS is the pregame coverage. Then they'll go to Indianapolis to play the Pacers on Monday before they come back home. And uh, the remainder of the month, however many days there are left, eh, you got two weeks and some change uh, to use the promo code CLOVER at CLE Clothing Company. Uh, C-L-O-V-E-R, that will get you 20% off. We just got some of the brand new uh, Cleveland uh, sports shirts that MMS yeah, is dropping. Those, and those basketball shirts are good. The MMS, are these up that people can buy them now? Or we're getting so, them? Yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, so there's uh, plenty of MMS gear, though, and uh, anything and everything with the word Cleveland on it, or variations thereof. The land, the cleave. Uh, I wonder if New Orleans Clothing Company has shirts that say, the leans. Come on down to the leans. They knew what's good for them. Yeah, I wasn't sure what the nickname for the basketball team is. I had a couple people text me and say that they called them the Pels. Pels. Which seems really lazy. Uh, but what are you going to do? Sometimes that's all it Pelican, takes. So, yeah. so, I mean, you don't have to be too clever. It's the Pels. I mean, it's not like the Cavs was not lazy. It's just Cavaliers shortened. Yeah. What do they call the Bulls for short? The Bulls? <laughs> <laughs> we don't shorten the Bulls. The no, don't shorten the Bulls. The Bulls. Uh, the Bulls. Really Tonight, the Bulls. Yeah. The Bulls. So, tough season for the Bulls. Yep. That DeMar DeRozan boy, he comes in in the clutch, that dude. Woo! Taking well, it should, to the Pacers. They like should uh, be in the clutch more often then. Well, he's good when they when well, he does what should, he's supposed to do. They should be in close games more often. <laughs> yes, because, they should. Uh, that would be nice I mean, if they were doing that. Hey, they're they're in the ninth seed. Yeah, they're, 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 they, sure they can are. maybe do win a play in game and they're running out make of it seeds. Into the postseason. Yeah. No, you got to get hip to what they call the teams. When I first moved to Pittsburgh, I didn't realize that the Penguins were called the Pens. I didn't call them the Gwins. <laughs> I didn't realize yeah. that. And so one of the first things I was doing on the air, one of my first... Uh, what are the sh- Gwins doing? One of my first shows, I was reading uh, a thing talking about giveaways. The station was going to be out doing an appearance, and there were going to be giveaways. And it said Pens tickets. And I thought that somebody just missed a comma. And so I said it as... We're going to have pens and tickets. Hmm. And I was like, what the hell did I get myself into with this goddamn radio station is giving away pens? Uh, but they were quick to inform me, no, pens short for penguins. Of course, the NHL hockey team mm-hmm. and uh, pens tickets, which, of course, uh, a good get. Well, then you have you gotta know. the ones that are out of nowhere, like the Pirates, Pittsburgh Pirates. Everybody calls them the Bucks. Buckos, yeah. Buckos, yeah. That's right. Because a Buccaneer is a pirate. Yeah. Yeah, so they really... Um, they really throw you a curveball with that. But uh, anyway, I mean, we had that with the Indians when the, the tribe or would call the, them tribe. the tribe. Yep. Uh, now everybody calls them the Guardy Boys. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what they call them? Yeah, it's like so the Hardy Boys, but it's the Guardy Boys. boys. <laughs> yeah, the, I like Guardy Boys. Mm-hmm. I won't lie to you. Just like I mean, Romo Fijo has yeah. 
caught a flame. Yeah. I'm pretty sure for uh, the MAC tournament that they're doing over there, uh, they, they can't stop saying Romo Fijo. God they bless them. Yeah, good for them. Well, they should. That's what they're going to be playing. Um, if you are good um, at a lower level of uh, hoops, let's say, I don't know, mini hoops, right? Uh, we got the last few appearances for the Bud Light March Mini Hoops Challenge. Bill will be out tonight and tomorrow night. I'll be out on Saturday. And this is your shot at the end of all of it, because we're doing the finals on the 23rd. At the end of all of it, whoever's got that highest score. And the dude in the lead right now has got triple digits. Yeah, he's good. He's real good. He's very good. He uh, could win the whole thing. Whoever wins here in Northeast Ohio uh, goes to Vegas to compete for the grand prize, which is $10,000. So Bill is going to be at the porch in Willoughby tonight. From 7 to 9, uh, he's going to be at the Islander in Middleburg Heights tomorrow night from 7 to 9. And then I will be in Brunswick at a place called Hot Shots on Saturday. That is from 5 to 7. So, uh, you know, maybe come by, grab a little grub. Um, you know, don't put your greasy hands on my balls, though. If yeah, you're going to. Wash gonna, them. Yeah. If, wash them. If you're going to do the uh, the mini hoops uh, challenge, you got to wash them. And uh, we're getting two qualifiers from each one of these stops, and then they all come out to the finals on the 23rd, and we send one of them. That's in Medina. To Vegas. That's on tap. Yes, the and finals. I think that's even earlier. Uh, that is two to four. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be hosting well, your the finals. finals they, they wanted to make two sure it was to a, four. You know, they knew that there was going to be so many finalists there that they like, we can't just have this well, place run amok with mini hoops finalists. Not only that, but it frees up my Saturday night, right? Mm-hmm. And that's fine. I got Everybody's got other things to do. You know, people who came out this last Saturday in Willoughby, you know? I was talking to Ron from Willoughby, and, and oh, he, he I, couldn't be nicer. And Ron's you know. a very nice guy. Yes, and so uh, talking to a whole bunch of people, and I would ask people, what are you doing after this? And some people were like, oh, we just came out to say hi to you. We're going to go home or whatever. But a lot of people were like, ah, well, you know, go do something else. So it, it kind of frees up the rest of your night, and there's nothing wrong with that. So anywho, uh, wherever you want to join us for this, just go to WMMS.com and hit the contest page there. Uh, you can get all the, the details. We talked about this a while ago, or at least kind of the broad strokes of the fact that there are, as of a few years ago, there were only three people in the entire, well, was it the world or the United States? I think there were three people in the world that were still in an iron lung, and one of them has died. Uh, so now, saw this. by my math... Uh, that means that there are only two people left in the iron lung. This is like if you got polio, in, you know, in the 50s. Yeah, but I, I understand he's living, but is he living or is he just existing? Because it looks like you can't move in that thing. Like, it's it, it's just a breathing tube at this point. Well, and if the power goes out, it's a whole thing, and it's, you know. Yeah, but would you rather be dead? Is yeah. Bad, right? You would? Yeah, that... Them being like, a tube boy? Like, like, he, his head is just sticking out. I was like, yeah, he's alive, but that's the equivalent to being on bed rest your entire life. But isn't that your dream? <laughs> yeah, like, just what are you complaining about? But he doesn't have- People are bringing you uh, beverages with straws. You just tilt your head but and I, sip. But he doesn't have use of his arms. He doesn't have use of his What of do you need legs? your arms for? To toss off if you want. Like, you can't do any of that stuff. Well, there's holes in the side of this thing. You know, they got to give them sponge baths and stuff. So there's. Do that. I don't. No. I, oh. I want to go in peace. I want to go in peace. He's got like a mirror up above his head so he can see things. Paul I... Alexander. He called himself Polio Paul. And he spent 70 years in an iron lung. And he died of COVID 19. He just died last week. He was 78. Bro. He made it through all those early waves. Yes. And just got yep. One of these stupid variants. Yeah. Oh. Think how, and I'm just <laughs> curious. I'm sure you, I don't know if it's listed in the article, but how much would something like that cost? Was he a, like an experiment where, you know, they just want to see how it works so they can. Uh, well, no, that was modern. That was regular practice back in the day. So it wasn't really. A, so insurance is not even going to cover this like now, I'm guessing, right? Oh, yeah, I, I, I don't know how any of that anymore because no. nobody has polio. Right. Okay. Um, but give them time. The mega dopes will uh, help bring us uh, polio back uh, by not getting their kids vaccinated. They got a measles outbreak in Florida. Um, yeah, so he contracted polio when he was six. 
1952. And he ended up in an iron lung. And it said while he could live outside it for extended periods of time, he never really left it. So uh, Polio Paul has died. And that leaves. I was trying to find who the other two people were. And I could only find one of them. And I think she's still alive. There's a woman named Martha Lillard in Shawnee, Oklahoma. And she's 76. And she is still in an iron lung. So if that number is still true and she's still alive, uh, Polio Paul was one of the three last people in the world in an iron lung. And um, he died in somewhere in Texas. Here's like advice for me. Don't name your kid Polio Paul. It feels he like a bad, Yeah, they didn't name him that. They, well, that it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy yeah, if like, you do that. No, no, like, he, he called himself. I'm, if I have a kid, I'm not going to be like, oh, this is our baby AIDS Andy. Like, that seems like, like a bad AIDS sign. Andy. Well, <laughs> because somebody, obviously somebody's going to get really mad at that because they're going to say it should be AIDS Andrew. Oh, yeah. No, it, we just went with Andy. Oh. Full name. Well, this guy would post things on TikTok and, you know. I live in Dallas, Texas. And I have had a, an opportunity back in 1952 get an epidemic of polio to contract well, anyway, he's, you know, uh, that's... Uh, well, rest in peace. <laughs> yeah. But that's what he's doing his whole life. What do you say to somebody who dies being in an iron lung for 70 years? Because he's been resting in peace his whole life since he was six. So what do you say to somebody who's died that way? Rest in peace? I don't know. Well, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> he finally got out of the yeah. iron lung. He just How wasn't much? there to enjoy it. That's what sucks. How much would it Are they going to bury him in his iron lung? No. Well, I don't know. But imagine, and he, I would love to know, and I'm sure there's people who do know. I'm sure this has been well established or whatever, but I'm not doing deep dives in the lives of people with iron lungs. What I'm saying is your muscles obviously would atrophy over that time. So do you think it would be like. Oh, so you're not like pumping iron lung. No. No. You think it'd be like that old Mr. Show sketch where he's got the really tiny body? I mean, he was a burn victim yeah. and it was just David Cross's head. I wonder if this guy, if Polio Paul's body was like very thin and small, like no musculature. What do you think? At all Probably because not. of yeah. all the atrophy. Yeah. What? What do you think it smelled like in there? Well, they have to wash his body. I mean, you, it Still. probably didn't smell great, yeah, but, yeah, but I mean, I'm, you know, it's not like they sealed him up 70 it is years a ago chamber, and never, though, like, never opened it, it up. They took his body out and he just went. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, think, like think, Cheech think and Chong like, opening the doors. I know of their how car. I smell, like, on a hot summer day, just like yeah, just like after I, like a run on, or like a walk. Yeah, but the guy was never moving. I right. mean, it, it he wasn't matter. sweating. Even he wasn't just like balls accumulate <laughs> smell. Oh, like God. it gets. It's been resting in that fat. Like, you're not moving your legs or anything. Like it's just there. Mm-hmm. I it, bet it just smells like. I bet no, it, it smells like an old folks home. Yeah, I was going to say, I bet it doesn't smell any worse than, like, a grandparent's house. Because he's not moving, so he's not getting sweaty. Old folks don't smell like they used to anyway. We, we were or might just be common once I can't. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because of all the perfumes and, and uh, emoluments and no, they, emollients? I don't know what they, they just smelled weird when I was a kid. And they yeah. don't smell like that anymore. It, it just It's a very stale smell. We talked about like this. When before. I go to grandma's, it doesn't smell like my grandma's house when I was a kid. Well, there's probably there have probably been great advancements in um, there's been perfumes and there's been uh, air fresheners and yeah. things like that. I, you know, I just also think some of the products they used back then just stuck with them. And then also, I feel like old people keep themselves up more now than they used to. Well, that and also back then there weren't all of these like floral scents. It they were using like two or three things, right? It was like. Rose, rosewood or something. I don't even know. Yeah. So it was like grandma smells. Mm-hmm. And then you would associate that with old people or Ben Gay or whatever. Yeah. So Polio Paul, not his given name, uh, has, has passed away. And as of 2018, there were only three people left in iron lungs. So the lady in Oklahoma, if she's still alive, and this guy, lived through a lot, could not live through COVID-19. 
Uh, William, hello. Hey, Alan, what's going on? I hate the show. How are you? Thanks. Um, I want to tell you, I read the article on that on the BBC, um, and he was out of that iron lung uh, quite a bit. He actually learned how to breathe on his own, but he likes staying in the iron lung, according to the article, when he was sleeping or resting at home or whatnot. But he also became a lawyer and, and uh, passed the bar exam and everything. What? Yep. Read the article. Was he? Was he try? I guess I didn't go that deep. Was that he? Makes me feel like a real piece of crap. <laughs> <laughs> was he trying <laughs> cases from inside the mm. iron lung? No, they actually had him in a wheelchair because he was able to breathe. So they took him in the courtroom. I'm assuming. Wow. They into so that. the iron lung was really just at night, like just for like his his resting. Not really. Yeah, when he first contracted polio, he was in the iron lung for I think like five years or something like that. And then he started to learn how to breathe on his own. Now, he was still paralyzed from the neck down from the polio. Oh, okay. He, he ended up uh, learning somehow how to breathe for short periods of time throughout the day. And then he would actually he actually went, and went to college and finished the bar. And wow. Okay. Really so they should have called him Lawyer Paul. <laughs> He's not polio, yeah. Paul. He's not just defined by or his the iron, iron lawyer. lawyer. Yeah, iron lawyer. That's bad. Yeah, the iron lawyer, right? Yeah, yeah that sounds good. Ooh. I sleep in a giant Ooh. tank. Have you, you been hurt at work? <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, William. I appreciate it. I didn't go that deep in the article. A little mirror. <clears throat> Nothing else in the world except that. You, you, you of course, you, you can't. Uh, your body feels sort of separated from the. From your head, and uh, <clears throat> you can move your arms. And I can move my feet. And arms. Well, you shouldn't. You sure couldn't be claustrophobic. I mean, it's just your body that's uh, contained yeah, that, there. But still, take that weighted blankets. <laughs> Bring back the iron lung. Okay, so the guy was getting out of it. Then it was, yeah. you know, okay. Well, that's a little better than being there the whole time. Went to law school. Wow. I would have been a great lawyer. No, I would. I think You're I would. You're a paperwork guy. You know, know that's the problem. Paperwork. But, you but have when to you do? have to, when, when you have to present the case, I would have thrived in that moment. Your Honor. If I had somebody else to do all the paperwork for me, including yeah. all the schooling, and they just were like, "Hey, now." Oh, you, you as you, an orator, you, present, you would have yeah. been the guy, oh, I see, pleading great. your case. Yeah. And in summation, mm-hmm. I object. Overrule. Mm-hmm. You don't say that. You're the lawyer. <laughs> Your vacuum can't get in the corner. I hate to tell you, but you bought a real piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I should clarify when I said my vacuum can't get into corners very well. I have a riding vacuum. So that's why it's a little cumbersome. Mm. That's what threw people off. I, I wasn't clear about that. And that one's a little, it's zero turn, but it's a little hard to get into corners. And boy, was it expensive. And man, does it take up a lot of room. But it really, really does work. And it's really convenient. That guy was a real-life Ironside. Well, <laughs> Ironside was in a wheelchair. He wasn't in an iron lung. So was this guy. Yeah, but Ironside, wasn't he uh, paralyzed from the waist down? I don't know who Ironside is, so. It was Edmund, uh, it was, uh, God, what was his name? Uh, Ed, Ed. Uh, Raymond Burr was Ironside. He was that was like a seventies uh, TV series where he was a police inspector who had been paralyzed in a shooting incident. Oh, Raymond Burr, mm. Ironside. Yeah, I think when I was little, 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 that was still on, and he was going out and and solving crimes. And Quincy Jones did the theme song and the whole. There you go. Remember this from Kill Bill? Yep. <laughs> uh, isn't this Ironside? Uh, anyway. So he got out of the iron lung. I guess that's good then. He got to see a few things, live a little bit of life, go to law school. I wonder how I, I wonder how they presented him. Uh, with his JD, with his degree. If they just walked it, they held it up in the mirror, or if he went, they put him in the cap and gown. Hmm. 
Well, he's gone. R.I.P. Polio Paul. Not his given name. The Iron Lawyer. And I wonder if that lady in Oklahoma is still alive. She should have had to catch your name, so we didn't just have to keep calling her the lady in Oklahoma. Yeah, that's true. Well, yeah. Alan, is there anyone left in an aqua lung? I mean... <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. Breathing in an aqua lung. Breathing in an iron tube. <laughs> Rolling up to law school. <laughs> I've been here when I was six. Mm. Give me another one, pound cake. Uh, I've been diving in the water. <laughs> the guy's paralyzed on waist down. I don't know. He he can't swim. Can you swim when you're paralyzed from the waist down? You can. You can't move anything. I don't know. What a, a classic joke is, what do you call a paraplegic in the water? Bob. Bob. Yeah. <laughs> Alan, tell Bill, old people smell differently because a lot fewer people smoke inside now. Oh. Bring back well. old people smoking inside, yeah. <laughs> Why but does they, Grandma not smoke? But my grandparents never smoked. Mine didn't either. Yeah, that was not a, it wasn't a smoke thing. It was just, it was... Some something they were rubbing on themselves, something just different. Alan, do you also wonder how it smells when you watch granny porn? <laughs> well, I don't watch granny gonna, porn. Who, who, <laughs> I'm not gonna say who watches that. There's some freaks out there that will watch it. Well, don't shame people. Some people have, uh, you know. I said freaks, as in uh, freaky, you, not freak as I in weird. See. Well, also, some people they they go right to it. They go if, if G I L F. If it's anything they, like. Uh, MILF porn, once you turn the ripe old age of 38, they're like, all right, I guess she's a granny now. Uh huh. My hot stepmom, she's yeah. like 23. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, you're older than her. What are you talking about? I want to know the people that start out, their category is GILF. Like, they. They've been. They started porn when they were a grandmother. Like they haven't been doing it their whole life. They're like, well, I've done everything in my life. I have my grandkids. We talked I about just, that Japanese lady yeah. a while back. She's like the biggest porn star in Japan, and she started when she was like sixty-seven. Oh, that or was, remember yeah, her? That was yeah, she's eighty now, and it all smells like fish. <laughs> all right, I got a break. I want to send a text three five one nine two Alan Cox Show dot com to watch live. My buddy Jim Tu 